Hey, this is Patrick from Frontly. Today, I'm going to show you how to use data filters to create situations where your user logs in and they only see the data that's relevant to them, pulled from the spreadsheet and with a filter applied based on some information on their user profile. So let's get started by checking out my sheet so you can see what we're working with. I have a list of tools. This is one of the example sheets that gets generated in your account but I've added one extra field called warehouse. So I have tool names, categories, quantities, but what I really want is I want my app to filter the data based on the warehouse. So let's say I have a user in New York, they should only see the tools from the New York warehouse. And if a user is in Chicago, they should only see their Chicago tools. So this makes a lot of sense and this is a really common pattern, right? You're gonna to wanna to have data based on who's logging in. Maybe they're on a certain team, maybe they're in a certain city, whatever it is, you can set it up. So let's go back to Frontly and let's actually leave and go to the users page. So if I go to my test user, John Smith, there's no special fields here right now. I haven't added anything. So I'm gonna add a custom user field and I'm gonna give it a name of warehouse. I'm gonna select the text type and hit save. So we've just defined a field that is now stored on the user and I can go into every different user and I can manually add a value that can be used in data filters. So if I go to John Smith, we can now see this warehouse field has appeared. I'm gonna type in New York and then I'm gonna hit save. So John Smith is associated with the New York warehouse. We haven't added a filter yet but now we can go into the tools page and we can add this filter very easily. So if I just hit preview before we add any filters, you can see that all of the cities and all the warehouses are coming up. So that's great, but we wanna add a filter. So now if I go in this little pop-up window here, when you click on a block, click filters, and there are two different types of filters. In this case, we want the hidden filters. These are the filters that don't appear anywhere in the user interface. They aren't configurable by the user. They're happening behind the scenes. And that's really important because in our case, I don't want my users to be able to see records from other cities. I want to limit them. So we're going to add a hidden filter. And there are only three fields here. The first one is the name of the field in my spreadsheet that I want to use in this filter. In this case, it's warehouse. Now, we have an operator, which for the most part will either be contains for a partial match or equals. In this case, we can use equals to ensure that even if there was a partial matching word, it wouldn't, it wouldn't work. We just want exact matches here. So it has to be exactly New York in order for this to show up. And finally, there's a value. You'll notice that you can type in here with free text, but in general, that's probably not what you want because you want this to be dynamic based on who's logged in. That's what this special little button over here is for. You'll find this all throughout the app in different fields. You can see it over here as well. In a lot of text fields, we have this option, and that means you can inject a dynamic value, which will change based on who is logged in or the situation. Let's click on this, and we see another pop-up. Insert variable. In this case, we want to select the user to pull data from the logged in user, and now we're presented with a list of all of these fields some of them that I've created and some of them that were default. So I'm gonna click on the warehouse field and now you can see it's populated this field with this special variable. So you can't really see the whole thing just because of this user interface, but the special syntax for variables in Frontly have these two brackets on either side and then it has two words. There's the data source name and then a period and then the value. Now. You don't really have to think about this. That's why we built this little pop-up menu because a lot of users don't wanna to have to worry about that. So just letting you know, this is gonna appear there. If you, you can delete it, you can just select it like that and you can delete it, but this is important for this to work. So what this variable is doing is it's grabbing the value from the logged in user and it's gonna grab the value of the warehouse field. We created that field in the previous step. So that's all we need to do. We just added these three fields. We can hit save. And now if I go preview the app, 
because I'm logged in as John Smith, you can see the filter worked. Warehouse is only showing fields from New York. And just to prove that this is working, if I go back to my user, oops, that's the wrong user. If I go to John Smith and I change this warehouse to Chicago and hit save, then we go back to my page and, oops, that's the old one, and I'll refresh this. There we go. Now we've got only the Chicago records. So very simple, really, I took a long time to explain this, but it should only take you a few minutes to set this up and you can add as many hidden filters as you want. So if you're on a page and you wanted to add multiple filters, you can just keep adding them here. Um, probably you don't need too many of them and you don't wanna get confused with all these different layers of filters, but uh, that's, that's really the whole setup there. So if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to our support team and we'll be happy to help.